Tan 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 tan, 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 tan 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 tan. This motherfucker here wanted to. <laughs> Compare Drake, Compare Drake to, to Jay Z. No, no, no. Um, what was what was the debate all about again? I, I forgot, think? but I remember there was a comparison. <laughs> I, 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 I wrote comparison was about longevity. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Longevity? Jay has been this in in in, in, in what sense? Um, rem- remember was was it MTV or or the the billboards that put Drake at uh, the artist of the decade? Remember no, but that? that's bullshit, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. When Jay Z started, we did not have any streaming platforms. Okay, yeah, there's that. Right, we had yeah. CDs. Yeah. Mm. Drake, Drake came yesterday, bro. Speaking of streaming platforms, and, and th- that's the same argument that people make when they try to compare Asha to fucking Chris Brown. <laughs> You've heard that bullshit, right? Yeah. Like Chris. Oh, why did I laugh? Chris Brown is a child. <laughs> yeah. Why did you laugh? <laughs> Asha has got atomic bombs, bro, dude. You made me wanna. That was 1998, by the way. And have I told you how? And the guy in 2022 is still able to give you a hit. Did I? T- I I've told you how. I've I've told chicks that this shit is not gonna work. This relationship is not gonna work. The minute that I ask them about a song and they do not know the song, <laughs> <laughs> you are but lucky if I don't that, stop the car and very, kick you out. That's a very unfair assessment of a Wh- chick. Why? Um, how old is a chick first? She's of age. Uh, of age means anything above 18. So if you are assessing her based on her musical knowledge mm-hmm. and she was born in, this is 2022. So anybody mm-hmm. born in 2014 is 18 years old. Right. It's unfair. No, it's Asha, not. Sally, no, no, it's I, not. You, you, know about, you, know, song. you know about Marvin Gaye. You know about Marvin Gaye, don't you? I do, but Asha, yeah, listen. But then, wait, wasn't Marvin Gaye way before you were born? Yeah, but am I gonna start? Com- so my Listen, point is this: Am I gonna start comparing no. Marvin Gaye? No, but here's to my people, point. Like Asha. No, but here's my point. Yeah. Though she might be eighteen or nineteen, the aunt, it's not all of them that are going to be stuck in that era. There are some that are gonna, that are gonna take interest in old tracks. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, but I mean that's my point. Look, you love artists from your time because you grew up listening to Asha. I get it. Yeah, I get it. So why are you gonna force her to start liking? I'm her not gonna force. I'm not saying I'm forcing. And you're gonna I'm f- saying who I gravitate towards are people that connect and so don't go for 18 year olds. Go for 37 year olds. I don't go for the fam. You said she's a bitch. What 37 year old do you know with good pussy? <laughs> Give him another show, these guys. <laughs> show me one 37 year old with good pussy. You understand what I'm saying? She is she is 10 years away from me. So listen, you if you're gonna go for an 18 year old, I hope you can. Or, or anybody in their 20s. Yeah. <coughs> Give him a shot. You're not gonna <laughs> force him to come up to your level. No, here's what you, in many cases, no. have to dumb down. Wait, you, in many cases, have to accept what the no. no. You are a Jay Z fan. They are a dumb baby, little baby fan. No. Anyway, no, but we, wait, hold on, hold on. And, and, and that's the thing, though, is now when you go for 18 year olds and when they throw tantrums, they're most likely teething, right? That's not what my issue is. There are plenty of young ass people. Wait, are we recording still- already? <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, welcome to that Z podcast. Today's episode, man, it's it's lit, man. So so lit. You, you, you can tell just from you the. Did choke. You, <laughs> I did choke. You, you did choke on your bullshit, yeah. Today's episode, we have a legend. Bullshit is what you have on your face, dude. You know, I don't know why I was stylist. Oh, by the way, we are dressed by uh, Vintage Point. I don't know why I'm, I always feel like saying Vantage. The Vintage Point. What's, what's her name? I, I'm not Diana. like Dan. I'm not liking these sunglasses. I feel like Princess ranking or Princess Diana. <laughs> I feel like someone else, man. Do you, like, you want to bring the table close? Yeah. I like square sunglasses, Diana. Sorry, but the, the rest of the clothes, though, brand new, fresh from New York. We're yeah, looking because fresh. Because square. Lovely. Yeah. They, they're dope, right? Yeah, I, but they're I not for everybody, though. They're not for everybody. They're not for my face. I've, got a, I've got a narrow face. And you've got a narrow face. Yeah. You have the what's what's his name again? Joel, <laughs> Joel Osteen. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos Teen is what oh, she's called. Oh yeah, me. yeah. <laughs> anyway, I bet you could actually fit in between Butler bars, like your face. My face. That is. <laughs> Have you watched the Terminator? <laughs> you know the carpet <laughs> Terminator. The T one thousand. The T one thousand. 
the way it was able to just yeah, just go through shape, everything. Shape, shape, jeez, right? man, I was I was legit scared of that motherfucker growing up. <laughs> I couldn't have been the only one. That nigga terrified the that shit out of me. That was 1992, bro. Ah, that nigga terrified the shit out of me. Anywho, today we have a legend on that Z podcast. Um, I think any Zambian who has loved Zambian music from the time we had what we call uh, modern Zambian music, the moment I say, dup, dup, skibbity bum skank, you instantly know who I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, please help us welcome a legend. One of the pioneers of what we call modern Zambian music today. The man has entertained us for years. He is no ordinary civilian. Mm -mm. He is a general. Talk about it. He actually had an album Talk about entitled it. A Five Star General. <laughs> Talk it was about the Five Star General. That's how he introduced himself <laughs> to me when I saw him just now. Don't call him David Banda. Don't no. call him Ozzy. No. Call him the Five Star General. <laughs> Talk Ozzy. about it. The five stars. Welcome to that Z podcast. Bro. Thank you very Welcome, much. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Do I'm you honored also to be back here. A little. I would like to look at the general. Oh you yeah. Can leave <laughs> Even I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed, bro. Yeah. The type of clothes that I'm that I'm wearing are very luxurious. I can't. I, can I know. Be I, 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 I need time to slouch. I, think I need to lean back as well. You got gold chains. Like and shit. like Fat Joe. Mm. Yeah, I was dressed up by Diana from the Vintage Point. So she said, "Put the gold chains or make mm -hmm. you look." Some type of way, right? Yeah. Gold rings. I, I, I told you her should, I, you should have made that a pinky ring. It's good. I told her gold rings. I feel like a pimp in Harlem. <laughs> right. Like I'll be slapping somebody later for my money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Looks good. I love Please it. Just give me my money. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. Nah. Man. We know. No, general, just Aussie. general Aussie. General just General Aussie. 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 Spoke, or Aussie the general. <laughs> we spoke so much about you six, seven episodes ago with your brother Roberto. Okay. And. It's, it's did nice. You watch that? Did you watch that though? I did. Do you watch that Z podcast though? I do watch that Z podcast. No way. Whenever, whenever I get the chance, um, uh, it's difficult because of my Your schedule. My schedule. Yeah. There's a lot of things. So whenever I get the opportunity, I get that one hour that I can spare. I'll sit and watch. We feel humble. Yeah, I do. I've, I mean, I've, 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 I've actually seen a number of your shows. So and great, 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 great show you guys have. Thank Thanks you, sir. Thanks yeah, a lot for amazing, support, amazing. Um, can we talk about first the elephant in the room and that elephant right now being the World Cup? Or like, can we talk about soccer for a little bit? Okay. I know we spoke about Cristiano Ronaldo a bit <coughs> off screen. <laughs> yeah. how, how are people feeling about the things that he said? <clears throat> are you also feeling like he said what he said because he was trying to leave Man United or he just spoke his truth and they should have <laughs> made changes as to what he spoke about as regards the football team? He was trying to worm himself out. He pulled a Kanye. Mm. Mm. That was him because he's been trying to leave. Okay. And the only way that he could was to go and talk shit with P.S. Morgan. <laughs> How do you feel about I, I, I feel like he, he's reached a point where he's got so much power. And, you know, with power comes a certain type of vibe like you know i can say this you know i'm allowed to say this you know he's he's known world over you yeah. know he's he's got a voice where he feels like when he opens his mouth and says something things should change people should move you know he's he's at that level i mean we're here talking about him because he's that well, huge you yeah. know and that's what he brings to the table. So I think, like Elson said, I mean, it's, I think about at, at some point, maybe he felt disrespected and he was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to tell it all. Okay. I'm going to be smart and just there go out there. And <laughs> wasn't there a period that he sort of went to like a bunch of teams trying to solicit to see if they would buy him? There was? I'm, I'm not a soccer like, fan. Not, I don't know. No, I, I don't give a shit about soccer. Martin, do you <laughs> But I think there was nah. a period. There's that no soccer fan in this room. Do you, do you nah, want soccer? I, wow. There was a period that he went to like a bunch of teams. Wow. And he was yeah. trying to see if he could get an offer. Mm. And they all turned him down. Then he went back to Man U. Wait, has anybody picked him up right now after all no, this? No, I don't think so. He's like that dude, like he's, he's, he's in a relationship. Then he slides in a couple of <laughs> girls' DMs <laughs> to see if he can get a better offer. <laughs> And all the chicks and say sometimes that. just to see if you still got market out there. <laughs> right. I've always said to people, this is this is so true to Ronaldo. I've always said to people, like, some people have been in relationships so long, you forget how ugly you are. <laughs> like this guy's been so comfortable for so long, 
he forgets how there's like other talented kids out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. The I guys are about thirty-seven years old. So, man, you have dropped him like a hot potato. They did. They have. They said with immediate effect. Yes, with immediate. They say. They say. I think they, they agreed. They came to. Has anybody picked him up? No, I don't think so. I don't know. You know, they said, dude, you don't need to pack your shit. <laughs> just stop <laughs> that interview. Just go home. You don't need to pack your shit. <laughs> We've already cleaned out your locker room. Be out of here. Wow. wow. <laughs> Putting your shit on the Uber, bro. Just give us the address. Speaking of other things that are trending, considering we, we no one in this room, the whole sound crew, the camera crew, nobody watches nobody soccer. Watch us talk on this room. So nobody's watching the World Cup. <laughs> You're not even watching the World Cup, Martin. No, Ozzy, are you watching the World Cup? Um, a few. I've, I've seen a couple of games. Um, I saw the, the Germany. Upsets, yeah, the upset, yeah, I saw the. I I, I yeah. watched that one and I followed Argentina. it. Argentina. I saw the Argentina, um, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, and I saw the Germany, Japan. Mm. As well, and pretty impressive, pretty impressive. I, I expected that from Argentina. Uh, though, right? I like the upsets, though. Yeah, I think it it shows you that you know a, a team is bigger than an individual, mm. Mm. especially where people expect because Messi is in Argentina. Yeah. We're gonna expect miracles from this team. They're gonna tear apart these under for the longest time we've been for the longest time we've been playing yeah. n- c- names. Exactly my yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of upsets and for me it's it's really exciting because it's like the big guys are under so much pressure and they really need to come through. Who do you have your money on? Um somehow Germany still despite the ups, upset with Japan but I still put my money on Germany. Ozzy? I'm going with an African team this time around. Senegal. Are they even playing? I'm not even sure, man. Yes, they are. Seriously. Yeah, they, they are. Uh, they lost their first game. So which game. one? I think... We don't have too many. We've got Ghana, uh, Senegal. Yeah, we've got Ghana, Senegal. The usual suspects. Cameroon. Mm. Um, hey. I'm putting my money on uh, either Ivory Coast and Cameroon. Okay. Yeah. Because we're going to have to play back on this. I, I, I have Brazil. <laughs> Brazil? Yeah. Brazil. I think Brazil is back from. I think so. Back from oblivion. Martin, who you got? Brazil. Brazil. All right, cool. You're going with the same Lame, names. Same names. They're usual suspects. Yeah. <laughs> Let me quit putting money on. The same Brazil. Niggas, you. What the fuck is wrong with you guys? You can't be, can't be creative. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Aussie. Um, you know what? There's so much to talk about when it comes to Aussie, man. Yeah. We were Let's go with it. Earlier step about, by step. You know, can we talk about your coming up in the game? Because mm. as far as most of us are concerned, we just had this man just show up on the scene. What was that hit song we're talking about again? His one of his first hit songs. Um, uh, what was the song again, Martin? There's so many. There's so many. That's the thing. And you just seem to show up from nowhere. So where, where did Ozzy come from? The general. His house. Um, <laughs> came from Cowboy, little town, Broken Hill, just right here. Yeah. Uh, an hour, 30 minutes from Osaka. I really got inspired to get into doing music um, after I, you know, like, Listening to artists like Bob Marley, Sean Paul, Supercat, and right here in Zambia, Daddy Zimmers. You know, like the very first time I heard like Juju Lava. Yeah. The original mix. What the fuck? The one that he made into the Handyman's Paradise advert, right? Man, I was just like, <laughs> whoa. Because we had never heard anything like that in this country. Yeah. It was all music from Congo and mostly Kalindula. But we never heard anything like that. You know, like these guys actually decided to make something that was totally foreign to Zambian music. Yeah. And for me, that was like, yeah, they did it and everybody loved it. And I said, you know what? I want to be that guy. Ozzy. What's the name of the song that you just mentioned? Juju, Juju Lover. Juju Lover by Daddy Zimas. That was by 98, Daddy yeah? It's it must have been, yeah, 1998. Does yeah, the song talk about what the title says? Um, because if it does, that's like... No, no, no. The song actually talks about a guy who does not want to be in love with a Juju. You know, like, he's so much in love with this girl. Mm. And 
he's trying to find out like is is it true love or is it you know what I mean? Uh, That's exactly. He, what he's I'm basically saying, saying, saying I'm no crazy, juju lover. Bro. You know what I mean? Like he's not I'm a juju no lover. No juju lover. Well, so juju you know lover I mean? is like witchcraft, right? Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, but there, he, there's, he there's was people talking about how he doesn't want to be, or he doesn't want anybody to use any voodoo on nonsense him? on him. Yeah, yeah. That's like I'm no, yeah. yeah, juju lover. But why? Why is his mind there? Because that's a scary place to think. Like, I, I don't want any girl to use juju on me. Like, just calm down, yeah. bro. Why? Why are you? Why is that on your mind? To um, I mean, it's it's we've 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 seen those things happening. You know what I mean? Just is recently, just just recently, there's a video that went round that <laughs> went viral. Oh, you know what marker. I mean? And wait, our marker, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean. Look, we can't deny the fact that we're living in a society where these things do take place, you know, and sometimes you find yourself falling for someone so deep and you're wondering, you know what I mean? Like, is there some other pool here or is this me? You know? Let's talk about my So that's, 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 that, yeah, <laughs> that's I where, agree. yeah. Dude, I, initially before I saw the pots, and the ritual the candles shit. and no, no, yeah. I saw the candles only and I'm like see these these light skinned niggas <laughs> being all romantic being all romantic and lighting <laughs> candles and shit and here you are you dark skinned yeah. person yeah. and yeah. and then I then saw and I was like Jesus you saw the, the video no I haven't seen the video I've just heard people talk about the video but and, I have and, and the balls of the husband to say Martha in my bed and I'm looking at this like dude you no headboard you <laughs> no <got> curtains, curtains. <laughs> you should have just shut the fuck up <laughs> now I understand why Martha cheated She's, if that was voodoo she was trying to do that so she can get money to buy a headboard <laughs> she's doing you a favor and you've got the chick to say in my bed we have no idea what happened so let's not make conclusions I am yet. just so that's what happened that's how the that's that's how the bed you know when like. Elson sent that video to me I was wondering <laughs> I had no I never sent you shit <laughs> you know I I had no we have got Zikta watching I never sent you no goddamn porn I never sent you nothing the important thing is you're not the originator of the video <laughs> that's so what you yeah. sent it to me no I okay. never sent you shit right. I don't know where you saw it from okay when I received the video oh, you from I don't know because who. I heard about but I ain't seen shit. <laughs> when I received the video from I don't know whom, mm-hmm. yeah. my thought was, and she was pregnant, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you, what, what was your thought? I don't know. <laughs> you know, at, at first glance, you start thinking, okay, maybe it's like from one of these porn sites or something. <laughs> and then you hear the language, it's been like, okay, what the hell is going on here? And, and then then watch it again. My first response was like, she's pregnant. What's going on here? There are two guys in that room. Oh, one is a husband. Okay, I figured that out. It's sk- and the light mother. skin nigga. The light skin nigga. What, what, what's up with the candles and the pots and... Mm. And did you notice how she just starts crying? Yeah. Who started crying? The, the Martha chick. The Martha chick. She just like breaks out and starts wailing. Like the victim mentality, bro. Like the, the balls. And that room looked like a lodge. Did you see the tiles and where the bathroom was? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Jeez. And apparently it's because she couldn't conceive. But she's pregnant. And that's how she got pregnant. Okay. Through the what rituals? Through the rituals, yeah. So apparently that was like the last stage. Okay. Like I think the nigga had to nut in her one more time. <laughs> I will not make any conclusions. I will not Fear judge anyone. Women men and wow. light skinned niggas. Ozzy. Yeah. The, the time you were coming up, I, I, we were laughing about this earlier. <laughs> um there was there were so many no no no. Then there were not that many studios. There were very few. There was what? Um uh, Cypher, there was uh, Sling Beat. Was Roma Side operating at that, at that point? Yeah. Yes. yes. Side was You there. were not with Charlie the time you started, were you? When I came through, I recorded a single with um, TK yeah. at Roma Side titled, titled Backstabber. Okay, so that's like what I started using to try and like audition. Cause like back in the day, in my day, you had to go through for an audition for you to get signed up. Damn. You know what I mean? It was like that. And I went through like an audition at Nexus. I remember traveling from Kabwe, coming to Lusaka and I came for an audition and they were making a compilation. Um, and I didn't make it. You know what I mean? I remember meeting the likes of Mampi there, uh, Alubusu was like part of the panel of judges and we were crazy. Alubusu, yeah. And K Smash was on that panel as well. TK, 
you know and not being selected just hurt so bad man i was like ah oh, shit <laughs> you know what i mean like okay we'll see so i tried auditioning mondo when they were doing the rhythm nation the project rhythm nation project yeah that was a good combination yeah i yeah. remember i knew a couple of people there and i dropped off my you had to drop off your demo at um, Rhodes Park school yeah so i went and dropped off my demo there and i never got any phone call man i didn't get it i didn't get any calls so i figured okay you know what this is what i'm going to do i'm going to record a single and i'm going to show them that i got it you know and that's what i did and thanks to uh, mr stan kasengo um in kabwe who yeah. actually paid for my very first single you know and my chikabie kabie chikadi jimai chikabie kabie you know and yeah. i jumped on a bus came to osaka and went to roma side i paid tk like yo i got this song that i wanted to record let's do it i recorded that song in like 15 minutes man tk made tk tk and myself we made the beat Yeah. TK went to take a shower. When he came back, the song was done because I had all the lyrics and whatever just right yeah, up heard there. You over and over. You know what I mean? Yeah. And MKV is the one who actually engineered that record. We sang it and I was done. I was ready to get that record. Like, no, but you have to is, relax. Is we get no. Backstabber, backstabber. Ukremandi we mzanga koma mbali uninena. Backstabber. Bugstaba choka apa sindi we munzanga that particular song you know that was like the very very first record it was, that was it a very good song was it it was a great record it is But a great record make it like to the main well the i mean it was it wasn't really like your commercial record yeah. it was a hardcore record hardcore dancehall record if you play today you know it's one of those records that you want to play and you want to see women winding down like for real right. One of those type of songs yeah you know it wasn't really your commercial record so i had to kind of like tone it down bring it down a little for me to have that audience that everybody commanded already right. you know yeah so it's about learning the game you know you jump in and you already have your nasty d's you already have your chameleons your dannies yeah, and all these other the names still he had he had already passed the time when i was this coming into the game he had yeah? no he passed in 2000 yeah, but that must that, have been like on the 5th of january 2000 that somewhere there you know and it was really really joy yeah, man like yeah. you have a one of he had the biggest album the biggest for, album. for me that was like the biggest album that time You know? Was it the Anyamata? Chibaba. Ch- Chibaba, yeah. Yeah. And then just as you uh, your graph is going yeah. there and yeah. yeah. Also sad for yeah. that is yeah. I mean, he took me under his wing, man. He literally took me under his wing Seriously. and he told me I like your shit and you're going to feature on my next album. That's how close I was to like okay, getting there and you know, he passed and I still had to find my way. You know, and I think I'm happy it had to be that way because it has taught me a lot because sometimes you think the journey is just a bed of roses, you know, but it's not. You know, you have to go through everything and sometimes I look at artists today that will probably think because they've got one, two, three people pumping in that much and then you think you just need to be given a certain type of respect or uh, what can i call it um stature in the industry but you really haven't earned those stripes you know because i think it's always nice when you go through the levels you 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 see yourself grow you, you, there's a certain respect that you command when it comes like that um, easy come easy go you know the harder they come the harder they fall you know all these uh, it ain't just cliche you know people have seen these things happen so i always believe you need to go through the journey and enjoy it man as you go through it so that you can one day sit be an old man and the way i'm sitting right here and tell the story 
you know it's it's better that way you know no shortcuts true story man so at what point does the trajectory start going up like at what point do you then you know meet the right people and things start working out like the charlie bravos because I'm, I'm i'm sure things didn't quite work out for tk yeah. when you did no no no. i mean with tk it was just basically me going over there i mean he had basically the entire industry running to Roma side for him to re- to produce the record you know like yeah. tk was that dude you know and enough respect to him you know uh, every time we sit link up and say like let's do some stuff it's, it's ever amazing i went to david sling at the time okay and those artists at the time those chameleon crystal sean tommy d gasman uh tattoo was there hamova as well you know those are the artists that i found there i think there was a guy called yeah ramesh and i took my demo there i took my backstabber and they listened to it like, yeah i know it's all good man and blah, blah 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 okay cool so what do we do <laughs> you know what i mean what's the story now we'll let you know give you a call Okay, cool. And we'll call us we'll call you. Yeah. And next, there wasn't even a phone call. We kind of like just started working together. You know, we Charlie was working on a project called Namanje for Hamora and Chat with the Late. It you know. Spark, come on. Yes. Oh, crap, those you know guys, man. And Ikaspaka baby. So, he made me a part of yeah. that project. You know, I helped write a few songs here and there, collaborations here and there. And basically that was kind of like the start. And there was a compilation that they released, that they put together that given it out to most of the radio stations. I recorded a song called Chanda on that one. And that was like my very first song that I recorded at Sling Beats. And the rest is history, man. I started just working. You know, I I I started working and working every other single day. I just whenever I had the opportunity to be in the studio to record something, would do it. And <clears throat> here's a story that a lot of people don't know. Uh, my first hit single, Osalida. I was on a bus, yeah. Uh, I'm 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 going back from the studio. So there's I think it must we must have been listening to Radio Phoenix and this song starts it's by Danny you know what I mean Osani sule Osani da ute Osani da ute So why hit me you that song TK, TK. Yeah. Ah, no wonder, man. you know what I'm saying So I'm listening to the drums and precautions man i'm like <laughs> this is my first time by the way okay and i don't have a phone that can actually record an audio yeah i'm like this so you had to mentally record the whole thing this is tough so what do i do i said i want to make a beat like that i go home as i'm walking home I'm I'm already I'm already hooking up that beat in my head huh I go to the studio the following day when there's like a free space I got a beat that was actually trashed that's how we made that was I got that and started plotting you know what I mean the program called Cubase music program called Cubase I started putting that check on the credits man I produced that record check on the credits as a general baby osalira ukunaya olukutali mpe okotwa fuma kutali sana chibe chibe ine nkabwela you know what i'm saying so you hear the drumming on that song i was basically trying to duplicate duplicate what tk made with usani sule you know what i mean i'm like yeah damn <laughs> this is fire you know what i mean and i came through with that also lead a record you know what i mean hamwa came through and did the vocals on that you know we we finished it up charlie did the mixing and you know he put the right instruments on it and yeah we had a big song you know for for 2004 december you know getting getting into 2005 and it was like 
General Ozzy was born, you know, like I, I became a house, guys the household year. name, you know. I mm. think every beauty pageant, remember Martin 2005? Mm. Mm. Mizidik, Mizikas, you couldn't have a gig with We did every guys. we did every show, man. We did every show. Yeah, we did every show, man. We did every show and all the girls wanted to hang out with us, man. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Sorry? Just hang out. <laughs> they wanted to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything more to your question? No. Just that? Yes. Right, they, they, they want to hang out, you know? <laughs> you know when I look back in retrospect right now, like, yeah. how did you guys manage to have, like, a crew so strong? Almost everybody on the crew had a hit song. Mm. There was you, we used to work, we Kanji, used to work together. We used to work together. Seriously? We used to work together. It didn't matter whose project it was, yeah. everybody had a hand in it. If it was Chameleon's project, Hamova, General Ozzy, Taitu, name them, man. Yeah. They, they all had a hand in it. Drex, you know, uh, one of the guys who has not been appreciated at Sling Pits. This guy, oh, man, he did a lot of things, man, at Sling Pits, but he's never been appreciated. And that's what hurts me because this guy single-handedly almost produced Chameleon's first album. You know what I mean? Like he did most of the projects and he did a lot of work. Drex. You know, Mr. Big Star, he's the one who produced Mr. Big Star. Oh, man, you know, I saw Kanji, Kanji you know? yesterday. Yeah. As I was dropping my kids off at uh, school in, what, what's that area? The, the Nipa area. And she was in a very nice car, but in a uniform and stuff. And I saw her, and that's a song that came back to my mind, Mr. Big Star. Yeah. Are you able to convince her to come back and just do a song, man, or two? I think she did uh, an album. Recently. But it's like the, the gospel time, album, The gospel right? album, yeah. yeah she oh, did yeah, a yeah, gospel yeah, album. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. I think for me, she's one of the best female vocalists that will ever come Hands out of down, this country. Hands down. For me, I was really amazed by her talent. I always respect her for that. And hey, man, we 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 did a lot. We did a lot of work. I think at Sling Beats, and I want to mention here that I think a lot of people need to be thanked and appreciated for the work that they put in over there. Wait, where's that water? I'm hearing water you know, pouring from somewhere. Mm, where's that coming from? Oh, it's mm, the ice. Mm. My bad. My bad. We're good. And again, you guys had, and almost at the same time, simultaneously, you guys had so many hit songs. Speaking of, <clears throat> yeah. So before you go on, yeah. Um, this beautiful setup that we have. Oh, by the way, yeah. Let me bring me a drink as well as Elson talks about our setup in <laughs> the house we're in, the apartment we're yeah. in right now. You you like this, Ozzy? Have, have you been here? Have you been here before? To Kingsland? Yes, I have. Oh, yes, I have. Yes, oh, I have. Excellent. Yes, I have. I was, I was actually um, yeah, checking out. Drink. Just make sure the logo doesn't show. They're not paying us. Some of the houses that they have here. And I did not realize that you actually just buy a shell. And right. you, no, you basically, so just you just buy a shell and you have to start, you know, like kind of like so furnishing so, so it yourself. Always, so at times mm-hmm. you can buy something which is finished. Yeah. Um, with, with, with everything in, you just bring your furniture. Yeah. Or you yeah. Can buy just the shell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously just put in whatever you need. But where we are now mm. is actually an Airbnb. Mm. Um, so if you, actually we're getting in December. We have all these yeah. people from the diaspora coming in. Still our girlfriends. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here for a meeting and uh-huh. if you need a place to stay. There's this place in... Uh, so how, how do they book this particular apartment? They can call you or they can call me. Oh, sweet. Cool. Beautiful. So call me. Cool. Ozzy, I was Amazing. talking about how in that era, talk about, let's say, and, and I could be missing the mark here, but 2003 to 2000, about six. Mm-hmm. That period was Sling Beats versus Roma side. You guys, did you ever like, you know, when you meet at gigs, look at each other like, hmm, like Sling Beats and you meet the Roma side click. <laughs> I don't think it was actually. you guys both had like, you were dominating the radio and the gigs then. I don't think it was actually even like Sling Beats versus Roma side because yeah. I think Roma side only had like Exile. 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 Yeah. Funti K. Funti K. Yeah. 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 So it yeah, wasn't really. Of it. Yeah, it wasn't really like that. I think we were like the biggest record label 
Yeah. We had the most artists and very diverse. So, and because I think each artist had a song with the other and whatever. So it, it was even easy when you bring the whole crew because it's like, can you feature on the General Ozzy song and Hamo feature on the Chameleon song? And, you know, it was like, like that. And it was amazing because we worked together the whole time. So it wasn't really, I think, about competition. It was just about having a good vibe, enjoying. And I think I really missed that era. Why? Because the music had guys would get into the studio not because they just want to record a song. You know, you want to come through with a song that will come through with a message that will make the next person, before they get into the studio, like, you know what? I want to make a song better than that one. I don't see that now. I don't. And it makes me sad because I want to quit the game, but... People be saying like, no, man, come on. Look at what's happening right now. Mm. We're not getting no quality music. We need what you're giving us, what you've been giving us, man. We need that. Like, yo, but come on. Uh, I need to pass the torch. You know what I mean? Like, there's all these youngsters that want to work with General Ozzy, with Roberto. Like, oh, hey, but then say, come on, him, dad, we need whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, can't, I can't be that guy forever. You know what I mean? I need to create the next biggest general aussie better than general aussie you know what i mean so what do you think the problem is no the thing is i think we, we're taking shortcuts and right now i can't even tell what genre is what because today people just jump on stuff there's there's a time in this country you knew you know like this is dance hall or this is whatever you want to call it right this is hip-hop this is r&b this is that this is galindo you know what i mean those that today not that i'm trying to criticize i'm just saying you hear r&b artists on dance hall beats throughout their career you hear uh, uh, you know what i mean you hear <coughs> guys that are supposed to be hip hop and their own beats that are like like come on man <laughs> no i'm and yeah i'm i'm not i'm not i'm not shooting at the industry guys check yourself yeah you know what i mean check yourself like how how are people going to recognize you like who are you what do you represent what do you carry you know there has to be a distinction there has to be a distinction. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't be everywhere. Like, come on. What do they say about... Uh, what, it, what do nice they say? Done. Hmm. Is that okay. what you're thinking or just say... This? No, and, and that's exactly what I'm saying. <clears throat> we need an industry where people should know when they hear a beat, they know, you know what? If I brought in K plus on that beat, that is his type of thing. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. People like Nate Dog were synonymous to a certain type of beat. Mm -hmm. It was all hip hop, but mm -hmm. if you hear a certain kind of beat, mm -hmm. do you get what I mean? Yeah, you would you would associate people Ex like Nate yes. Dog, Warren G, yeah. Snoop Dogg yeah. Yeah. to a certain yeah. Dun, dun, dun. yeah, like there's a lot of pianos. Yes, so I know exactly you what know. you're talking about. Yeah, it's basically that, and that's what I would love yeah, to see. Don't, don't you feel like maybe? Times have changed and mm. every generation has sort of its own sound. Mm. And maybe this generation wants to hear an artist that's not fixed to a certain genre. They want to hear a person like Drake who can rap and sing, Da Baby who can rap and sing and fit on any kind of beat. Maybe times have changed and we need to accept that things have changed. You don't <laughs> feel that's a thing? And maybe people are saying, Ozzy, come back. Uh, people maybe who are stuck in the past and don't accept that things have moved on when the future now but that sort of kind of feels like to the game. times may change times may change but are you going to change who you are that's exactly what i'm saying it feels like you're playing to the gallery <laughs> are you okay. going to change who you are um today mm. i should be able to respect you for being you man be authentic 
be real, be original. You know, there's something about being original that just sits with you. Nobody can take that away. People will always recognize you because of that. You know, that's just real, man. That's real talk. Yeah, but my, my point you know what is I mean. But but I, this whole issue of don't you think you need to be? I don't think so. You know, if people love you, people didn't try to change Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. You know, Jay Z, but even Michael Jackson evolved. Uh, Say again. He Michael did. Jackson uh, how did he evolve? He didn't. How did he? Evolve? From what? To what? From, From a very pop. pop sound to a very R and B sound. No, it's always been pop. To, he got to very R and B music in the 2000s. So what R and B tracks did he make? The songs with uh, Neo and what's what's the what, so no, yeah, I was listening something. Was that, he alive then? <laughs> I think he died in 2011. <laughs> yeah, no, I, because there's a lot of tracks that people are taking from. Michael the song Jackson. with Akon isn't that R and B? Which one? Oh, Hold the one he hand? did with Akon. That's Michael Jackson coming into no, a new age, again, isn't but, it? But, but then again, even yeah. when he was in the Jackson Five, he made love songs. Yeah, but my point is the sound changed over the years. Okay, look, I think the point but, here, but, the point but, I'm but, to, yeah. but but did he still get the three to love? Did he still get the off the wall love? Did he still get the bad love? You no. know, no. which Can you is back your point up, nigga. Okay, so he didn't. There's just something about being. Come on, man. <coughs> There's only one you. This is why I never respect Nicki Minaj. For that reason that he just said. Well, because she keeps changing with times? Yes. The one minute she makes hip hop, the next she makes pop. Mm. Like Starships. And then she's doing techno. She's doing techno. <laughs> David yeah. Guetta comes and then you have all these people jumping on David Guetta's feet. <laughs> yeah, but hasn't every modern artist done that? Like a DJ comes and you switch your style up to try to meet the demands of the market at that particular but point. Yeah, this is what I'm saying that we, we, we go back to Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. He makes music for people that have grown with him. With him. Mm. He is not going to try and make mm. music. We were talking about mm. this for mm. the 18 year old. Mm. Mm-hmm. So the people that loved Jay-Z in 96 when he came in are now in their 40s and 50s. Yeah, but not everybody can be a Jay-Z. <laughs> Others feel they need to change with the industry in order to sell. But because their I'm, style has outlived the times. Because they pick a style from a certain time. This is what I'm you know saying. What I mean? You're playing to the gallery. Yeah. You do not believe that this is who I am. This is who I need mm. to be mm. to be relevant. Mm. Because if I stay who I am, I am going to lose my. I'm going to lose certain audiences. Yeah. But do, do you, you want to do that? Like for real? That's honestly. my point. I'll give an example. But do you want to do that? Do you want to do that? In the early '90s, Tracy Chapman. Are you going to lose your K plus image to try and just fit in? Like really? I've been doing this microphone thing for years and I still sound the same like I did back in the day. Exactly. I understand. But exactly. what I'm saying is we need yeah. to accept that there are others who feel they need to change in order to still be but how does that make money. But, but, how, but how has that worked out? Commercial to make exactly. money. How has that worked out for them? Whether you have respect for them or not, they're still making money. And those are How has that worked out for them? They're making money like Nicki like Minaj. You've given an example of Nicki Minaj. Yes, but then again, yeah. isn't she the same one who's crying foul because she's not been... <laughs> Selected for the Grammys. You heard about this, but just last week she was crying for all that. Like, oh no, I was not selected for the Here Grammys you because you flip fucking flop. Changing or whatever. Exactly. You, she doesn't know if she's a, 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 a teapot or a fucking hockey stick. <laughs> anyway, back to Sling Beats, uh, Ozzy. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy you brought up the issue of uh, Kanji. Yeah. I know Kanji wasn't with Sling Beats. Uh, in the in the beginning, okay, she was a cipher. Well, what, what's the story of her transition from cipher to sling beats? I, I really don't know the story. Um, but all I know is that um, at one point she came through with a dude called Sean Cheddar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he's the one who I think she used to be at. Yeah, she was she was at Unza at the time, and came through to the studio we were working, and she came through. And uh, okay, oh Kanji, you know, like I'd heard of her at the time, like she had done something with Cipher, and I'm like oh, okay, let's hear because we used to see. I mean, being at the studio, we used to see a bunch of artists come in, you know, like every other single day. So it was like oh okay, and I think they must have tried her out on I think a Namanja song, 
you know, and she did some vocals on that one a song that I think Amora sang. Uh, I think Ndinen sang or something like that. It must have been like a wedding song. She recorded that. And after she left, you know, there's like a moment where Mangala like, mm, what, 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 what do you all think about her? You know, like, wow, she's good. You know, she's amazing. Really, really good. I think we need to get her. We need to start working with this chick. And next thing, you know, we're already thinking of ideas. I was working on my project at the time. So I was already thinking of ideas of how I could do a song with her. You know, and that's how we did uh, Wenye Chidadi. and Dichi Daddy. Oh, yeah, you know, man. and rest is history, as they say. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, songs, amazing. You know, speaking of songs from early 2000s that you guys churned out and all that. Um, just this week, a song making headline, Awe by Your Maps. Yeah. Hit over a million streams. You know, when, when that came out and when we decided we we're going to have General Ozzy this week, you're, you're more from, let me, let me call you the old school of Zambian music. The guys who sort of pioneered the new sound that we have today of Zambian sure. music. Because all we had in the 90s was Kalindul and yeah. stuff. Then you guys came on. I was watching a DJ Cleo interview. I don't know if you saw that one. Mm-hmm. Mac G and them. Mac G. <clears throat> yeah. Powerful. And there's, there's a point that he brought up, which I want to tie into this. He, he who? Cleo or Cleo? Cleo. That... Did, I, I could sense a bit of animosity from DJ Cleo for new artists, where he attacked new artists saying they're always busy posting themselves in the studio recording new songs. And okay. half the time they're doing that because they're trying to get approval from people to find out whether this song is sounding like it's going to be a hit uh, or not. Okay. You, know what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. But why do you think there's animosity there? Um, the way he came out. Okay. The way I felt like he's not accepting that things have changed and music nowadays is more social coming more from social media than you guys yeah. have to go around to radio stations mm. to put up your music. Mm. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. And then we've got your maps who put up a song in a day, 1 million views and stuff. How are you feeling about the, yeah, the never mo- had a million views in a day. Four days, <laughs> four days. My bad. <laughs> it is four days, right? Yeah, I did one. It's one point one point one today. I checked. Yeah. Okay. How do you feel about the whole, how the whole scenery has changed mostly due to social media. Mm-hmm. Like, are you old school guys tapping into that as well? Well, um, I'll tell you what. Social media has really helped in terms of music growth today, um, socially. And it's very, very easy to get your music out there instantly, immediately you release it. It has, and it's a good thing for any industry, for anybody, you know, Um, for us, do I feel intimidated or how do I feel about it? I feel good because the fact that we're able to get our music out there and not just in Z, like for me, my music is huge in East Africa, Colombia, Southern Africa, you know, and we got it out there. It just shows me that we did a lot of work compared to what is happening now, because it's much easier now to get your music out there because immediately you just post a link, whether it's a video, YouTube link, or, you know, audio link to, to iTunes or whatever, boom play or whatever. It's much easier now, but back then you really had to kind of like put in a whole lot of work and, it's a good thing. We, I mean, we've moved from where we were. It puts us at a good advantage with everything that's happening right now in the world. Great thing. Great thing. Um, and I can only be happy for the guys that I mean, uh, I mean, I, I still continue to keep that legacy going. That's huge, man. I mean, four days, 1 million, 1.5. That's huge. That's huge. I mean, you got to be happy for the brother. You ca- mm. you just have to be happy for him. It's it's huge. It's amazing. Especially and you don't get numbers like that unless your work is that good. How much of, because that's a double-edged sword, right? Mm. Because back in the day when, uh, I'm sure when, when, when you came up, you would have like CDs, you'd have tapes. Yes. Where you bring out an album and 
all that stuff is um is, is produced and that is actually sold so mm. you would know the number of copies C- cds and tapes <laughs> yeah that's <you've> sold <laughs> super shine <laughs> because now the days of super shine wow because now we also yeah. live in an era where views can be bought yeah there's people like Jar Prazer who have been accused of buying views <laughs> on, on YouTube so it goes directly to to uh, number one trending to number one trending right and yeah. that also could tell you if views have been bought or not because uh, if views have been bought it doesn't go to number one trending yeah. it could trend at number three or four okay but it will have like so many views yeah but it trends if people are talking about it yeah you we live in an organic, era where, or, organic there you go yeah. yeah we live in an era where there's bots yeah um tickets um tickets are put out i was i was watching uh the daily show and they were talking about taylor swift that uh ticket master crashed because when the tickets went on sale it crashed because literally you'd hear about artists selling tickets in like minutes or seconds mm-hmm. because you'd have these bots that go out and buy as many as possible um just so they they run out and they begin to resell that yeah so it's sort of like a double a sword mm. you know what i mean yeah. can you actually truly gauge how popular a person is yes based off what kalinga has just said mm. versus like actual cds because yeah. that had money had to be exchanged yes you pay money you get your cd mm. so if you sold a thousand cds Somebody had to had to go and buy them. It was crazy, man. There was a company called Supershine that you came through. You can't make your own buys, you know. And you can't make your own buys. <laughs> you can't. You couldn't. And we used to make stump Damn. their inlays. <laughs> that was work, man. I remember that. You yeah. know, would stump their inlays and they'll give you a certain number. And two days later, they're calling you because they want you to stump more. I'm like, and they've got like three times more than wow. what you you know and a week later they're calling you they want more it was like that and the beauty about it was one of the guys that had come through who started running that company he wouldn't want to wait until the month end once you know like he sees a project is moving hand you your check immediately like, come on let's go and it was like that what were those checks like though how, how how big were they pretty good pretty good i mean on, on my on my album the trilogy where you had potential you had jim tengo chamango yeah. we went over there and yeah really good really good i remember at some point where code to go and collect a check and that was like 2008 mm. you know yeah Go and collect a check for like um, 18 million kwacha because we're using million that time. Yeah. 18 million kwacha. You know what I mean? I went there and collected that with inlays, you know, so that we could stamp more, more CDs. More, yeah, more inlays for, for the CDs and cassettes. It was, it was pretty good. The people were buying the music straight up no doubt people were really into it and they were buying the cds they were buying the cassettes and stuff was moving it was really great you could actually see the cds going you know you walk into sounds you could actually see the zambian music cds and we had sounds arcade at the time you know and they had the show on znbc national Top 10, Tele- yeah. yeah so it kind of like made your shit top of le- legit when it's on number one, it's like it's on number one, the whole country. You know, like your CD is on number one, your album is on number one. Number two is that artist, number three is that artist. You know, like, okay, must have happening. It's right there, we can actually see it, you know? So it was amazing because as a young artist at the time and you've got these huge names that are equally on that countdown and you're also there. It just kind of like gives you this, like, yeah, I'm legit. You know, the fact that I can play with the big boys, the big girls, I'm there also. You know, that should send a message. It it did something for you, for the artists. And because that show, it wasn't just like a show that you had youngsters watching, you know, like you had people that had money, people that are 
head household or head of households. Yeah. You know, like when they walk into sound, like, oh, can I get that album for or uh, General Ozzy? Yes. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's for real. You know, they just bought it. That's why it's, it's on number one. You know? How do you engage with that number one nowadays? It's just about trends, right? It's just, just trending. Yeah. What number one, what on chart? Like, like, like on the chart, you know, you know, like this was like. Charts anymore, do we? Like, yeah. You know, you well, know, boom play will tell you who's the most listened mm, to mm, Spotify, and that's mm, it. Mm-hmm. That's how we gauge. Yeah, well, so it depends. Yeah, that's how we gauge the number of streams. Number of streams, but is it a good gauge though? No, it's not. <laughs> it's not everybody's online, is it? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Different times, man. And now when I have to drop my fucking Apple subscription, it's gone up again. Drop oh yeah, 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 it has. You've seen that, right? Yeah, Apple I did. Sounds yeah, it has. Yeah. yeah, it's gone up. What's it going? How much? Is it? Uh, it's nine, like nine something. Or something. Yeah. Wow. Now it's gone up to like eleven. Just be nine. So the two dollars is making you drop them. Bra, it adds up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know how many condoms I'll buy for two dollars? <laughs> nah, let's not talk about that, man. I think Aussie, Why? So, something. December first is World AIDS Day. <laughs> <laughs> so we should talk about condoms. <laughs> we should talk about condoms. <laughs> yeah, I'm sipping on my uh, Gordon's Premium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's still jean. Mm. Yeah, straight up, man. It looks very luxurious. Yeah, it is. Very, very nice. Very nice. Um, provided by digital events. Ah. Um, refreshments. Big time, you know? <laughs> Big up, man, like Moses and Boston. Big up yourself. Respect. One time. Yeah. One time. Mm-hmm. Last year, we had Charlie Bravo put up, uh, what was that? One Drum, the Renaissance. Okay. One Drum 2. Okay. Um, yeah, speaking of that renaissance, sorry yeah. to cut you off. Because my mind just works. Well, we, we were talking about diversifying your music and not sticking to your shit. Yeah. You saw how, you saw the backlash that Drake and Beyonce got because of the new albums. Well, Drake has got a new album of 21. But before that, mm-hmm. he had, honestly, never mind, which was like yeah. a house tune. Yeah. Do you, did you hear the disappointment that from actual, the truth? Fans. fans of Drake, yeah, who expected more yeah. of a hip hop sound from Yeah, him. and, and he gave him black coffee. <laughs> and Beyonce also had, I think it's Renaissance or whatever it is, which was a house album as well. Just stick to the what the fuck. Imagine if um, Serena Williams so playing, playing golf. golf. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what the fuck That's are you doing with your big ass? I know, right? <laughs> Anywho, uh, you I don't need Charlie Bravo's. Uh, you, you want to say something? No, 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 no. I was talking about Charlie Bravo's. Uh, eh? Uh, what, what, what was it called? You said one, Renaissance? One drum? One Ren- drum? Oh. Renaissance? Yeah. Yeah. And he brought back a lot of people that were with him at Sling Beats, sort of like a very nostalgic album. You, you weren't on it, were you? I think I must have been. Yeah. One of the Volume records. one, yeah. Are you, volume. you don't feel like doing one of those as well for yourself? Like bring back the cats that you worked with at Sling Beats and do like a compilation album of some sort? I think that would be too cliche. You know, like mm. people expect you to do that. And I don't like to be too predictable. Um, and I think right now at the level where I'm at, I'd, I'd love to just kind of like help out. There's a lot of young talent, very, very young talented artists out there. And my goal and my passion is to help out somebody the way i was given an opportunity i'd love to give an an opportunity to somebody out there you know and 10 years from now 20 years from now they should do the same to some for somebody else you know that's where i see myself it's not really trying to resurrect other people's careers Mm. or, or be seen that you know like i did this i did that yeah i did but this it's i think you get there's more glory in uh being praised by somebody who you've done something for you know unlike you trying to get all the glory all the time i think i've been there and for me it's not even about winning awards like oh i need to pick up the the satisfaction i get when i go to perform from from my audience is enough. It just shows me there's more people there that will appreciate what I'm doing than those few that will sit in a room and decide, yeah, let's give this to that one. 
Mm. Uh, let's give that to that. You know what I mean? For me, there's more. I, I there's more interaction. I see. I'm seeing it. It's right there. I can feel the love. Yeah. You know what I mean? And should it of, should it, should it be in a an award? No. No. Nah. And I've seen a lot of your posts. You get a lot of love from your fans when you're on stage. Yeah. And that's from the fans. Mm. How about the industry? Do you feel like you know you're getting you know love from the guys in the industry? Are they showing? Are they giving you flowers? <laughs> if I may, do you receive the flowers from oh, the industry? Oh well? man, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? I He's not. I I I <laughs> I'm, <laughs> yes. I I am more of a, a lone soldier than you know a guy who rose in a cool in a in a clique, you know, in a crew. Um at a very early stage, I noticed there's very few people that you can actually call your friends in the industry. Actually there's I don't Like I, I have zero friends. No friends in the industry. Yeah. Or no I have friends. zero friends. There's, I just have people that I I relate with, basically. But like friends, friends, friends. Yeah. Um. I don't think so. I don't think so. I noticed that. I actually realized that at a very early stage, and that's why I won't see certain faces around me all the time uh, unless it's my my brother roberto that's it you haven't answered the question though yeah that like, do you feel you get you flowers? get flowers, do you get flowers from, from, the from the industry from the industry i have no general Oz, you know what for the longest time there's people that are from my era that are getting more flowers than i because of the work that i've done i, I i've done And I'm gonna say this, you know what I mean? Like, put this on record, you know what I mean? Yeah, put this on record. You know, like, I've done a lot for the Zambian music industry um, in terms of pushing it internationally. Today, if you go to, I was I was talking to Eddie Kenzo the other day. Um, you know, he's from a, Uganda. From Uganda. You know, he's yeah. a Grammy-nominated artist. He was nominated for a Grammy. Serious. This year, 2020, 2023. Something Nicki Minaj couldn't do. He, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, and a guy from Uganda called Eddie Kenzo. I was talking to him. You know, we're having a video call, and he's telling me, General Ozzy, you've got more than four big songs in this country. Okay, yeah. let me let me let me play you that video, man. Let me see if I can I can find that video from Eddie Kenzo. Uganda. He's from Uganda. Okay, he's telling me, bro, something, yeah. you need to, you need to put some respect on your work. Do you know we've got artists here in this country that, not even in this country, he says we've got artists that will come to this country with just one big song, and would demand this lump sum of money. And you're mm. four. Okay, and he's telling me, bro, you've got like. Whatever. Let me play you that video, okay? Check yeah. this out, bro. Let me please put this video in. Okay. Send it to me. Out. Check this out. Check this out. That's just put it close to your microphone. No, no. Let me because I put it in there. Okay. Okay. Check that out. See there. So all these songs that you have as you know the hit songs in Uganda, are you getting your money from them, your royalties and stuff? Not really, not really. Um, you know, uh, there's a point where I think I got screwed, man. And there's people who are benefiting from my work, and I'm not getting a penny. Who screwed you? You know, you talking about Radio and Weasel? No, man, I ain't talking about Radio and Weasel. Who else screwed you? I'm talking about people that I was working with. Who that? You know what I mean? Who the names? <laughs> names? I'm talking about people I was working with, and this music is out there. It's huge. It's big. And who was this actor? Slim. You know what I mean? And that's what the, 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 
There ain't no money, bro. Nothing. No single penny. Zero. You mean to tell me General Ozzy has all these hit songs and mm. no royalties coming from any of these songs? From those big records? Yeah. In these countries? Mm. <laughs> Whether Zambia, Kenya, Uganda, where you're recognized as this general who has all these hit songs, no royalties come from any of these countries and these songs. Zero, bro. Wow. Zero. Zero. Okay. Wow. And it's a pity because a few months ago, you know, I, I spoke about this on my personal Facebook account. And sometimes people look at you and think maybe you're just wilding out. But we did some amazing work, man. Amazing work with these guys, you know, and with Charlie. Yeah. And hey man, let's 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 not take away anything from Charlie. Charlie has legend. He did some great work. You know what I mean? He had all these artists signed up. Chameleon, General Ozzy, Crystal Sean, Taitu, Hamova, Kanji, Mampi, you know. He's worked with all of them. Great guy. You know, but we can't deny the fact that there's certain things that these guys didn't do well. You know, and they messed up. And to date, right now, if you go to <laughs> Spotify, go to Deezer, all these Boom other platforms, play. Boom yeah. play, you're looking for a General Aussie album. You won't even find any of those images from those albums, you know? And it's crazy. You, you sent me something today. This dude, this is... It's crazy, man. Let me let me just guys put, bring that up. You, you sent me a link to <laughs> these guys just went and put their faces on this music, man. Damn. <laughs> ah, bro. Gosh. I I looked at that when you sent it over, <laughs> dude. This doesn't make any sense at all. What name is this? Kanji. Yeah, but is that Kanji's face? I don't know who Kanji is. Kanji's a chick. Okay. What name is that? Kanji. Hamoba. Hamoba. Is that Hamoba's face? No. no. <sighs> Tai Two. Show, 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 show him. Why Sling show him. face? Show him. Show Dude, him. Why, he knows Sling face? why is David Sling? Dude, I'm it's question. David's. It's David Sling's face. Why is That's he on? Charlie. The... That's Charlie's face. Oh, sorry, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie Bravo. Mm -hmm. Why is he putting his face on people's? Yeah, even the Mumpy <laughs> song has Charlie's Album. face, man. Album. What's that about? What am I missing I don't, here? I don't know, man. I, I, I questioned that as well. Like, what's that? You know, That's, when you said this to me earlier today, I didn't get are, it. Now I do after you mentioned it. Those, those albums are albums that we worked on as individual artists. Hey, who, who's this Charlie dude? He produced the songs. Well, no, no, no. He well, not let's let's not say let's not let's not say he produced the songs. He wow. he ran a studio called Sling Beats. Okay, that signed the likes of Chameleon, Namova, Taitu, Mampi, General Ozzy, Kanji, and the rest of them. You know, so amazing work that we did all of us at that studio man amazing i think all the work speaks for itself till date to date um but i feel like i think he got overwhelmed you know when you have that many artists is that your wife calling me no office yeah when you have that many artists you're working with i think you need to bring in people that are going to handle management of artists you can't do you can't be the record producer you can't be the manager you can't be the guy that wants to do the artwork you know what i mean you can't be the guy that's going to mix the song you can't be the guy that's going to write the song you know <laughs> what i mean like you, can't, nice. you can't you can't you can't you can't be you can't be all these things this is interesting you know what man. i mean because even the artist has to be the artist at some point you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there was a bit of getting too much into, I don't know. And 
for me that is really disappointing it it really hurt me when i saw that because like yo we did we did this work together and the artwork for the very first album for me like when i when i posted that i was like yo come on this music you gave it to Vesasani it's on Vesasani and the artwork is at Vesasani so if you you're saying you didn't have the artwork for the work at least you could have asked Jeremy from Vesasani you're still going to give you that artwork and you're going to post it on these other platforms and we're going to have that music we're going to have those original artworks with that work but that didn't happen you know that didn't happen So you're basically taking away my juice as an artist because there's an album called General Ozzy the General. Yeah, but why is Charlie's not an face album on it? Why is, is Charlie's face on Mumpy, Taito, Chameleon, Charlie's face everywhere? Is That's what I was saying. Because he's saying he owns all you niggas. Yeah, does he own all your works? I think we need to bring him on the show as well just to have a chat with him about this. Listen, does he own bro. all your works? Listen, bro. Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. I'm one artist who learned really quickly when I came into the industry. On my very first album, I actually produced some records on, on, on that album and I paid for production on one of the songs called Timwimbile with TK. On my follow-up album, I'm an executive producer. All right? I paid for the artwork I paid for the photo- photography. Face? No, no, no. For the photography. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a white white guy who we had. What's his name again? Martin would know. Hmm? He used to do photography. Um he used to work with Isuzu. Oh, his name again. Great guy like this. He did some some I paid him for photo shoot for my second album. And the only great photographer we know is Davis Tony. No, before 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 Davis Tony. Oh, okay. You're gonna yeah. be great, eh? Yeah. <laughs> before Davis Tony. Yeah, yeah Davis Tony is a great he's a great yeah. photographer. And yo, long story short, I did production, two songs from George Chivango on my second album, okay? Mm-hmm. Where you had Nimusang, by the way. Tishinika Fila Umbi that album. George Wango produced two records, TK produced two records, Roberto produced a record. I have my boy Will Bundu produced one record that makes it five. Okay? Mm-hmm. Chameleon produced two records that gives you what? Seven. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yeah. Mind you, How do we get I was five? paying for all these records. Two by, two by Chameleon. You understand? I was paying for all these records. I was mm. paying for production on those, all these records. And then today somebody want to get their image and put it on that. Make it look like that's not my work. Let's skip forward to the trilogy where you had Potential and all these other songs. Okay? I went and paid Ben Blazer to produce records for me. The trilogy. Potential, all those other records. Yeah. Okay? I like fucked out money. I went and worked with Inzi. Wait, were you still Vatis, under I went Sling to, Beats when all these albums yes, came out? Yes, I was, I was, I was working So it's one Kali. of those, uh, so it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's arrangement. No, it was, it was, it was 50-50. No, I hear you. It is fucked up. But I'm saying, I sort of now get it because you were still under the record label. Yes. It's like where R&B artists always come and say, Diddy is ripping us off. He still owns our music right. and stuff. But they were under bad boy records you know what i mean no but the country it's not right the, 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 the what does the contract the, say it wasn't like that it wasn't like that you, you need know, otherwise know. otherwise you wouldn't have that executive producer and brotherhood appearing that on that doesn't matter man no I mean, it does this is like no, it yeah, no, no, shady it, no, it g unit mm. it doesn't because yeah. if i keep going back to jc right Jay-Z contractually owed Def Jam 10 albums. Mm. It doesn't matter how many records he might have produced. They were still, they still belonged to Def Jam. 
how he was smart about it is when he released the blueprint three is he went to Dev Jam and he said, I want to buy out of the contract. So let me know how much and whatever I make from blueprint three all comes to me. Why I'm saying this is different is because if you are going to sign a contract and you're under this record label, even if you produce a song, it's still under the it's still under that record label. Mm. So whatever was in the contract, and this is why I always say you need to know what's in the hot dogs you eat. Yeah. Whatever was in that contract would basically say you could have you could have hired a photographer, you could have gone on buildings and <coughs> yelled out how amazing this album is. <laughs> All that success. Correct me if I'm wrong. I heard you say it was a 50-50 project. You were an executive producer. So his argument is why if I'm owning 50% of this work, is this guy putting his face only mm. on the art, on the on the uploads, on the streaming platforms? 50, that are, okay, so 50-50 yeah. could be in revenue. Is it in revenue? It's or is it everything? In everything? It's everything. It's everything. But is it no, though? Because, because if it is, you've got a case, man. It's everything, I'm a pretty bro. good lawyer. It's it's everything, bro. Her name is Abigail. It's everything. Which one? Oh, sorry, let me not ask. Not the one with the big ass. <laughs> Do you know her? Nah. She's got her own lawyer now. Everything, wow. bro. Yeah. Everything, man. Shout everything, man. Abigail. But anyway, you know, it's... You know, sometimes we, we need to put these things out there. Yeah. Moving on. Um... No, but there's really something. There's really something. Yeah, there, there's a major issue there's here. Major we need to have Charlie here. Bravo in this. You've got his. I've got his. I've got his. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we should call him. <laughs> what do you what? mean? Twenty forty four. And he seems uncomfortable now. No, he seems like pushing so hard. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no, man. <laughs> should we call him or bring him on, on an episode? Crap! I don't have his number yet. Great. You you seem like you've got a lot to say. You know anything about this? <laughs> a whole lot. You know. You do. You do? What, what you know about this? Okay. Martin. Let's hear it. <laughs> do you have a microphone? You want to come and sit here? Martin has his own microphone. I don't want to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you know about this? Uh, oh, 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 what do I know about this? Um, a lot of Sling Beats artists complaining about the same thing. Mm. Okay. I, I've known the camp for, yeah. for a very, very long time. I've known most of the artists. And it's like majority of artists were given a raw deal mm. or, or, or <laughs> it's either a raw deal or they just didn't read the fine print. I don't know. Now, exactly, now, that, now I want to know what's in the fine this print. This is exactly why I say you need to know what's in the hot dog. Yeah. Eat. Yeah, yeah. Because um, who was saying this? Something similar to this. Uh, they paid for everything and music was put on on different platforms, um, but it seems there's only one person who's getting paid. Mm. Huh. Is it wrong? Yes. Do you agree to it? Yes. <laughs> you know what? Uh, Charlie is not here to answer. So Let, let's get him on the show. Do you have his number? <laughs> uh. Charlie in the chocolate factory. <laughs> um, how are we doing there on time, Lamek? Okay. We need to wrap it up soon. Yeah. Because the attention is biggest. Okay, cool. We don't have his number, so we will call him to come on the show, to defend himself and also just clear the air on certain things. Because, I mean, there's probably some fine print that we don't know about here. There's definitely a fine print. For somebody to put his face and the name Mampi above it, the name Chameleon above it, uh, what are the names that I see there? Yeah, Ozzy. So yeah, so many names. He must know something that we don't. He would have been sued by now. Mm. Exactly, my point. He must mm. know something that we don't. So we need him on the show. <laughs> no, we really do. Mm. We really do. And moving on. Um, you, 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 you brought up your brother as well. And you guys have the brotherhood thing going on. How did, how did that come about? And how, is, how easy is it working with amazing, the family in the industry? Amazing, dude. Yeah. yeah. Um, He's shorter than me. That's why I like him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I know working with family sometimes is not an easy thing. So how do you guys navigate your way around brotherhood thing? Um, a lot of honesty. That's all. Um, it's always, you know what? 
this is tough. This is uh, it's a tough idea. No, nah, no, can we change this? Can we change that? Oh, can we turn it into this? And even if the glory goes to that one person, we all appreciate what we did because glory. it's it's our work, and that's how we've been doing it for the longest time. For the longest time, when it's my project, when it's his project, or whoever it is that we're working with, we put in the same energy. We bring in the same energy because it's brotherhood at the end of the day and that's what we've been doing man for the longest time for the freaking longest time i remember there's a time when um i went to the studio and he played me the african woman beat mm. you know he played me a number of beats bang, 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 bang. you know what i mean he played me a number of beats <laughs> bless that african <laughs> woman <laughs> it's just as disturbing your brain right now <laughs> so he played me yeah <laughs> yeah so he played me a number of beats and i was listening until he played that one i was just like that's the one you know what the beat sounded like <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, you that's the one. <laughs> like, yeah, that's I the like one. those nuts until now. <laughs> <laughs> Which nuts are those? These bro? nuts. Oh, <laughs> these nuts. <laughs> these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> these. these nuts. <laughs> yeah, so it was amazing when he played yeah. me that. I was nah, like, you know what? I think let's work on that one. I was like, you know, let's finish that project. And mm-hmm. I think it only had like a chorus. Yeah. And a verse. I was like, yeah, let's work on that one. Let's finish that beat. Let's kill that one. Yeah. And he was like, okay, I'll work on it. You know, and after a few days, he's like, can you come and put a verse on it? I'm like, ah, oh, but that's, that's like, your song. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, oh, yeah. Oh, can we? Yeah, okay, cool. So I put a verse on it and like, okay, let's shoot a video. And we did the video. Rest is history, you know what I mean? Next. You know, funny thing about YouTube, like your songs, okay, for you in your case, mm. the early 2000s, your songs were big here. Mm. But after like 2007, eight, your songs were bigger in East Africa. Mm. Roberto has sort of taken the same, you know, direction. His songs are bigger in East Africa. Mm. You're more widely accepted in East Africa, Tanzania, Kenya. Which, Rwanda, Uganda. Yeah, Rwanda, Burundi. Yeah. Burundi? Yes. These guys, him and his brother. Yeah. 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 Huge. Well, they say nobody's a prophet in their own land. Exactly. Yeah, but sort of they, they have that one hit song or a few hit songs that make them big in our country. Yeah. Then after that, it's sort of the love sort of shifts to East yeah. Africa for yeah. the two of you. What do you think that is? Yeah. I think it's the collaborations that I did earlier on with uh, Radio and Rezo. Uh Those introduced me to East Africa. And the beauty about East Africa is that they've got their East Africa TV. So if your song is huge, like they've got a countdown, which shows in all the five countries where they speak Swahili, where EA TV is. So if your song is like number three on that countdown, it's the entire block East Africa. that's watching. That's millions of people, man. You know, so that really, really, really helped. I think build the general Aussie brand out there. And every single time that I would travel to East Africa to go perform, I would always say, you know, they would always ask, yo, how many people are you traveling with? You know what I mean? Like your entourage, Roberto will always be there. You know, so I would always get him with me. And thank God, I mean, the entire time he was learning and watching and seeing what was going on. And he would always come back and, come up with songs and concepts for videos and today he's out there you know he's doing it back then he was jumping on stage with general Aussie supporting general Aussie right you know so for me to see him move to where he is today I mean it makes me feel proud yeah 
I, I remember the feeling would all get when we hear that dirp dirp skibidi bam skibidi. You know this song is gonna be a hit. Straight up, no doubt, man. Where, where, where did that thing come from, even before I asked my next question, man? Like, ah, man. Is it one of those just just just, just one of those things? You hit you know a blunt I mean? and you, you just hits. you just listen to a lot of dancehall, and if you listen to a lot of dancehall, like dancehall artists have got weed, this right? this thing where it they the weed. This, he doesn't want to. You noticed that, right? Like, no, because because I'm still talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they've got this thing, like he's introducing himself before he starts busting his verse. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you come through, and for me, it was that also. Like uh, okay, how do I come in? You know, like okay, introduction. <laughs> yeah, you, and you know it's gonna be a fire oh, verse, man. no doubt. 2003 to seven, you hear that? Durup, durup, yeah, yeah we even just start clapping, man. <laughs> Radio presenters we used to admire back in the day when they just give you that. Yeah, you know it's a it's a fire song. I think yeah. like a few years ago, uh, you you brought out um, General's Cry. General's Cry. Yeah. Last um, year. what we communicating on that song is it, it, it sounded quite personal and mm. what made you put out such a song was this like a personal experience what was that about general cry um there's a point when i actually went into school i started uh, i was at cavendish university and i started studying i was in school full time and <clears throat> i was in school for like a whole year six months six months and it kept me away from the studio if you've ever been in university full time mm. you know it requires that you are in it he doesn't you know full time <laughs> <laughs> you just that into the interview right every interview have you just said if you know what it's like to be in university full time do you I, i did a year so i know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are learning about it i was there one yeah, year but so, half time <laughs> <laughs> that really took yeah. up so much of my time and it was tricky Um people wanted me to be in the studio, give them music, but I couldn't. I could not. So there was a whole lot of oh, he's done. His time is done. Uh we're not going to hear from him again, you know. Uh the new artists have actually shaken them off. There was a whole lot of that. And for me I was just like, really? This whole time I've been working doing music you think I'm just going to give it up just like that mm-hmm. like everything I've ever worked for like do you know who you're talking to like like come on you know and that's why we came up with don't <clears throat> give up on the journey like don't give up man don't ever give up yeah you know because I know where I have been and I know what I've done I know what I'm worth so you know just hold on Generous cry. And we came through with that and everybody was just like in love with it and the, the response was like super amazing. Super super amazing. I think it was like three years, two, three years before I got into the studio to record that. Sweet stuff, man. My last question, bro. Mm-hmm. And this has sort of become like a trend. I don't know if it's a good thing, if it's a bad thing. I don't know. You guys will help me with this one, but every time I lose an artist in the recent past, we have fundraising concerts because there's no funds to you know put things together and all that I'm 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 trying to imagine that's why you've been quite busy with businesses like Vipeco restaurant and <laughs> could, could this be one of the reasons because I mean there's a lot of a lot of them are just dying without money if I may put it that way what 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 have you been up to is this uh Vipeco restaurant like an attempt to you know make things work for you are you seeing things that have not been working for him <laughs> no no i'm trying to find out that's why i'm asking <laughs> before you answer that speaking of because i also saw another artist who's also trying to make things work for him who's that bobby and bobby he's into business now he's into selling alcohol oh sweet mm. nice yes yeah because uh, i mean park. okay for me whenever i see we lose an artist there's a concert to fundraise money to pay the kids school fees i'm thinking okay This person I think that's not I think I think that's not a bad thing. That's um, why I wanted to find that from you. Your thoughts it's, on it's this issue. Not a, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. Um if somebody would decide that they want to do something to kind of like give to the family as a gesture as a gesture yeah. of 
you know in most um, african countries mm-hmm. that happens yeah uh, there's yeah. A m- money a token yeah that yeah. is taken to mm-hmm. to the family the family. widow or you know or the family or the children mm. i think it's there's nothing wrong with that Mm-mm. i think there's okay, totally to totally, totally, to, totally nothing have, wrong with that Phrase your question in another way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To paraphrase, yeah. we have this artist rises, makes so much money, and then they just, mm. you know what I mean. Next, next thing, this person they is they nothing. Can't, they can't afford it. Exactly my point. Mm. So mm. maybe, what can new artists learn from you, old artists, when it comes to especially financial management, life insurance. <laughs> And what can oh, the whole oh, industry, oh, the music eh? industry do going sure. forward mm. to ensure financial security for our artists? You know mm. what I mean? Because it, it it just doesn't look good. You know, somebody was there. You used to see them mm. all over the place making money. Then all of a sudden, mm. psh, the guys. This is where Prudential would have made a really good sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Limo. Limo. You see how we could have worked really plugged. Life insurance here. <laughs> keep up, nigga. Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Ozzy, yeah. I mean, it's a pity. Nobody wants to experience any of that, you know. Nobody especially somebody to. that you loved and you used to watch on stage perform, and then you know they really can't. The family's dire straits when it comes to handling the funeral. It's it's sad. It's really really sad. But I think it comes down to, I think that's a personal decision. It's not something that can be put out on the industry like mm. y'all ain't doing this mm-hmm. so that's why yeah you know i think it comes down to personal decisions these are decisions that you make as an individual what uh, what's my funeral we all know one day we're not gonna be here yeah true you know so how have you prepared yourself for that particular day i think it comes down to personal mm-hmm. it's it's more personal than industry issue that, that is true you know we yeah can say, we can say yeah. the same thing about radio yeah. people mm. <laughs> yeah so it's 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 all about you you know yeah. how, how are you prepping yourself for that particular day because you know it's coming mm-hmm. mm. talk about it yeah is that the phone no i think that was my phone it's 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 more personal so you, 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 you 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 gotta prep yourself as an individual how will i go out you know am i going to have this or maybe let's not, let's not whatever. take it that far yeah. like you mm. going out yeah but like on that day not really know, on I that mean, day I or see, when you what you are trying to do i'm not trying to do anything <laughs> no <laughs> phrase your question properly i'm not trying to do anything i'm trying to get an here's, answer for here's, here's my point <laughs> yeah my college dropout friend <laughs> i see because i understand your mind you won't telepathy I know what you're trying to ask. I'm not trying to ask anything. I'm just trying to be straight here. That's all. Just phrase it properly. Okay, third attempt. And let me the last <laughs> You're hot for a short period of time. And then you're not. And then you're broke. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When we've seen this, and it's not, it's not just in Zambia. It's all over. Like we've seen Zola in South Africa. You know what I mean? You're hot for a certain period of time. Then next thing you're not. Sahara. Exactly my point. So maybe like we said, it's not really just an industry thing. Like all of us should prepare for these times. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to get an answer for you from the, for the industry. Mm. You know what I mean? Your like answer should be, we see this more in the music industry. Yes. Anywhere else. Yeah. So is it- That's that why I'm happy Bobby East is doing what he's doing. Is it that the fame gets to you and you think you're going to ride out this wave exactly. for the rest of your life? I don't think it's just in the music industry. I think it's everybody. Not really. I think it's everybody because people, it's just that it's just that um people that are not in the limelight may not have people checking on them to see what happened at the funeral. No, like I think it happens let's not go it to happens the funeral. Let's it happens about, I think it happens everywhere. You're not a hot artist anymore. Yeah yeah it happens That's everywhere. That's what killed double HP. I think it happens everywhere. It happens everywhere you could be the hottest thing today mm. and f- as fate may have it tomorrow you're not how do you handle it you got to be straight with yourself that's just the truth accept that at one point artist x used to be the biggest in zambia and today we've got artist z who is the biggest 
or the most famous for me or most popular in fact i want to say most popular let's not say the biggest mm. most popular because it's about popu- popularity that's how we, we run I asked these this things because Ozzy at some point you were like yeah but I knew that's where your question was going yeah. why did you just ask that one I was just to get others to learn a few things from him first yeah. now I can hit the I question mean, on I mean, to us I mean, Ozzy you were like the guy uh, 10 songs <laughs> on the top 10 charts and now what's yeah. going on changing the battery <laughs> the water is full is this running yeah so keep it running like Kaling and I don't even we don't even need shots. to be there yeah No pressure. Keep it running. No pressure. Don't even edit this. So, Ozzy was there. Top 10, all your songs were there. And then you were not really happening anymore in this country. But you're still comfortable. So, what can new artists learn from you? Those who are coming up in the game and they're hot right now. You know what I mean? That's a dope shit. It's not yeah, even it's about... It's season not, Dior. It's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not even not happening. It's about um, not having a song or a record that people... Are probably vibing too. Yeah, my point is. Do, 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 no, no, let me, let me, let me, let me finish my point. Okay. Point. Uh, you, you know, it's 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 about that. It's not about you're not hot anymore. You, as that particular artist, you as K plus, you know what you bring to the table. You're still steaming hot. It's just that people have decided. You know what? We want to have him, the new guy, and not that one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You still have your fire. Your fire is still right there, man. Nobody has extinguished it. But people have decided, you know what? We want to ride with that one now. The new guy. Yeah. That's what it is. Don't tell me the fire you came through with is over, man. It's not there. Because you tell me, like, come on, man, I'm still me. True. You understand? Preach. It's basically that. So people will just have a preference, like, okay, now we want to vibe with this one. Mm. It's basically that. Tomorrow, they'll shift from this one to that one. And that's how it moves. So how do you accept to say, okay, yes, the ship has sailed on. People are now vibing with that one. And... What do I have? Why do I... You understand? It's basically that. So it's about being smart and keeping your thing moving still. Because if you're going to be drowned in the, let me try and catch up with that, you know, you'll be lost. Talk about it. You'll be lost. Trust me. Because if I ask you, You're going to tell me you still have that fire that you... Probably your fire has multiplied, bro. From the time that you came on to radio or into the media. And probably somebody was saying, like, come on, man. Like, who? Okay, what? <laughs> like, come on, he's yeah, done. Yeah, that's true, man. You understand? He's done. You can't be here forever yet. No. But people will say that, but you know your fire is still there. And you've got your believers. You've got people that love what you do. Those are the people that you're going to live for, man. And that's what it is. You already gain some lovers, people that love you, people that follow you, people that vibe with you, people that will die for you, that will roll with you. Are you going to lose them over just what? 20 people? We need to buy that machine quick, man. <laughs> I would have <laughs> home, pressed bro. the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the applause, man. Yeah, like, man. Really I dropping mean, gems. Uh, come on, man. And yeah. Are, are we in the shot now? No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> Why do you need to be in the shot? They no, can no, no. You. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been really good having you here, man. Thanks, like, man. It's been amazing. I, know, I knew you were going to drop incredible. gems. Sorry? This has been incredible. It has been incredible. Yeah. I knew you were going to drop gems, but not yeah. these big <laughs> atomic deep bombs. atomic bomb of gems. You know Did what I mean? Did I drop gems? Oh, Did I? I have, man. Did I? Uh, but the Charlie Bravo issue is still maybe nah, you can man. be in nah, the shot somehow. Nah, nah, no, man. why the fuck you want to be in the shot? <laughs> talk about vanity. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, just <laughs> talk. I'm trying to say bye. It's just it didn't say bye. All right, to the next episode. This has been a great episode with uh, Ozzy the General. And please do not forget to click on that subscribe button at the bottom of the screen right now. And also, uh, we are getting an Airtel number that 
you know, Patreon, of course. For uh, funeral contributions? No, for funeral contributions. <laughs> <laughs> you dick! <laughs> No, no, no. All I'm saying is, look, um, every podcast in the world that I know has a Patreon account where the people who support yeah. that podcast, you know, mm-hmm. make contributions to help with the, you know, financial, the costs of that podcast. So Patreon, of course, we've got a lot of mistrust from our viewers with mm-hmm. that platform and people are feeling, we've had a few contributions come in, mm-hmm. but we feel maybe having an Airtel number will work even better. So in the next episode, we're going to have that number up. And you can contribute from I, as low I, as five quarter to as high as anything. Are you happy now that the camera is on you? When I'm trying to make emphasis, so I have vain. to... Some so so vanity. I'm trying to make <laughs> emphasis. So what, they can't hear you? You can't make emphasis. With, you are on radio for the longest fucking time. This is not radio. You do not make emphasis then? <laughs> <laughs> to the next episode, have a lovely, lovely week. So that's, a, that's a podcast. My name is K+. I'm Elson. Elson. Elson the General. Blessed oh, up, man. man. Respect, up. man. Thank you. Skibbity bomb skate. Turup, turup, skibbity bomb skate. Galina potential, potential, in Boom! Bless.